being able to properly evaluate your AIP logic functions is an essential part of the development process. Hi, I'm Gina, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to build your first AIP logic evaluation suite. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We train thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. As a prerequisite to this exercise, you're going to want to make sure that you've checked out the end-to-end -end RAG workflow using Pipeline Builder and AIP Logic video on our YouTube, because in that video, you'll end up creating these embeddings of research papers, specifically about the forever chemical glyphosate. We're going to be using these embeddings in our workflow, so make sure you start out with that. Now, once you have those embeddings created, we're going to start off in AIP logic. So from here or from wherever you are in Foundry, you're going to hit Control J, and you're going to search for AIP logic. Now we're going to open that up. And from here, you're going to hit New Logic. And I'm going to call this one PFAS Question Answerer. And now I'm going to hit Save. So in this exercise, we're going to keep things really simple for now. We're going to build a function where a user can ask a question about glyphosate, and we respond with a yes or no answer. Now, ordinarily, you'd probably want to return a little bit more of an explanation, but for simplicity for now, it's going to be a yes or no answer. So from here, I'm going to hit Add Function Inputs. And this function input is going to be the user question. So that's a string input. And now we're going to use this user question to perform a semantic search on the corpus of research papers to find the relevant chunks. And then we're going to feed that into a large language model to determine if the answer is yes or no. So from here, you're going to hit semantic search. And we're going to call this find relevant research paper chunks. Now the object set, we're going to create a new one. And it's going to be our research paper embeddings, or whatever you called yours. The property to search, we only have our embedding property. The number of return objects, that can be a choice. I can keep it at three for now, and that will be fine. Now the query is going to be the user question. So now for the user question, I'm going to say, has glyphosate been found in soybeans? And I'm going to preview the run. All right, there we have our return embeddings. Now, if I wanted to, I could also check these out in Object Explorer to make sure they're sound. Now, from here, I'm going to take these chunks and I'm going to put them into an LLM. So I'm going to click Use LLM. And I'm going to call this one Return Yes or No. So for the system prompt, I'm going to say, you are an expert on the forever chemical glyphosate based on the research paper excerpts. Answer the user's question with only a yes or a no. And now here, we're going to provide the input data. And so we did promise that we're going to provide research paper excerpts. So here we're going to say research paper excerpts. And we're going to hit forward slash. And so we're going to grab those relevant research paper chunks and pop in the text. And then hit add one property. And you'll see we get this other block above this one. And the role of this block is to take the object set returned by the semantic search and return it as a string to feed into the large language model. And so now we're also going to provide the user question. And the user question, we're going to hit forward slash. It's going to be user question. Now, in a real world scenario, we would probably want to have some sort of I don't know option or it's not in the documentation, but we're skipping that for now. So here we have what the function returns. And so let's try it out with the question, has glyphosate been found in soybeans? So now I'm going to hit preview run. Oh, 
Okay. Yes. Now, again, normally we'd want to return some context, maybe cite as few sources. But the reason why we're returning such simple outputs is so that we can set up the most simple type of evaluation suite to easily determine if the answers are correct. So now that we have composed our function, you're going to hit save. And now it's time to develop our evaluation suite. So from here, you're going to click on evaluations. So that's that little hammer. And here, we're going to hit setup tests. And so an evaluation suite is a resource, so you'll have to give it a name, and it will live in a folder or a project. So this one is called the PFAS question answer evaluation suite. And now I'm going to hit save. So there's a couple of different ways to add test cases. Now, test cases can either be entered manually, or they can be object set backed. So what a test case is, is it's a specific input that corresponds to an output. And so in theory, these should be verified by experts. So these are the gold standard. These are the source of truth. So in this case, although we could do an object set backed evaluation suite, we're going to add our tests manually to keep it simple here. So from here, the first thing that we're going to do is edit test case parameters. And so you'll see here that it's taking in the user question. And we're also going to have to specify a response. I'll just call it response. And I'm going to hit update. And now you'll see that response shows up as a column under our test cases. And so here, I'm going to hit add new test. And so here, I'm going to be putting in a list of questions. Now, I'm going to name the test names the same thing as the user questions. So has glyphosate been found in soybeans? And the response is, yes, it has. Now, I'm going to add a couple more of these. So my next one is, has glyphosate been detected in U.S. honey? And so that's the user question. The answer is, yes, it has. So add a new test case. Next one, we have about 10 of these that we want to do. Has glyphosate been found in German beer? And the response is, yes, it has. Add a new test. So the next one is, have FDA labs validated a method for detecting glyphosate in food? The answer is yes. Next question, have glyphosate residues exceeded EU limits in honey? The answer is yes. Now, the next one is, is glyphosate genotoxic in bacterial assays? And the answer is no. Next question, have glyphosate mixtures shown clastogenic activity in human lymphocytes? The answer is yes. Next question, has glyphosate exposure shown no significant effect on honeybee brood? The answer is yes. Now, last question for now. Has the agricultural health study shown a link between glyphosate and cancer? The answer is no. And so those are our questions and our answers. So we're pretty biased towards yes, but still should be fine for these purposes. Now, you can imagine if you have a high volume of data, this would get pretty tedious. And so you're going to want to probably change this to objects that backed if A, you have a high volume of data, and B, if you want to build a nice operational workflow for users to actually be able to write back expert backed answers into this test set. And so now I'm going to add an evaluator. So I'm going to hit add. So you'll see there's a lot of different evaluators we can use. And again, we're keeping it simple for now. We're going to use the exact string match. But you also have regex match. You have keyword checker. You have string length, Levenstein distance, a couple of incompatible ones. So this is for numeric outputs or object outputs. You'll see here that you could have marketplace evaluators. We just don't have access to those right now. You may or may not on your own stack. And you can also make custom evaluation functions. Now, here, we're just going to keep it as exact string match and hit add. Now, the value produced by the function is going to be the function output. And the expected value is going to be the response. And so the output is called is exact match. And so now we're going to hit save. And now we have saved our test cases. So now from here, I can hit Run Evaluation Suite, and you can see that the test suite is now running. And so you'll see that out of my nine tests, 
I can see that 77% of them are an exact match. Now, we don't have a huge sample size here. So you'll see that one of these did fail. So the user question was, have glyphosate mixtures shown clostogenic activity in human lymphocytes? The generated answer was no. The true answer was yes. Now, in this one, this is an interesting case where the answer generated was no in quotes, and the real answer is no without quotes. So this means we ought to be more specific about how these outputs should look. So note here that I'm looking at the run from just now, and it's the only run I have. So I'm actually going to run it again and probably tweak the prompt so I can show you what it looks like when you have multiple runs to compare to each other. So I'm going to modify the prompt. So instead of saying only a yes or no, I'm just going to take away the quotes. Respond only with the answer and no punctuation or explanation. So now I'm going to hit save and run. And so here we can see the most recent run. So if I click on this one. I can see that I am now getting 89%. And still failing on that same one. So maybe that's something we should revisit and make sure that the source of truth answer is indeed correct. So this might require some sort of manual verification, but you'll see that this one that it got wrong just by putting punctuation in, it is correct now. And now I can also compare other runs. So here I have the one that I did at 301 and I can compare to the one at 258. So Nothing terribly different here, but we can see where one succeeds and one fails, and vice versa. Now, the last thing to show is that in the preview run view, you'll see that you have the option to add things as test cases. And so here, I'm gonna ask a question where I know the answer has to be no. So, has glyphosate been found in cat hair? I don't recall seeing any research papers about that. So now I'm gonna hit preview run. And so the answer here is no. And so I could add this one as a test case. And now it's going to be part of my evaluation suite. Now here I would have to configure the source of truth response, which again, I'm pretty sure is no, um, but I would want to double check that and then I can hit save. And so that is the benefit of doing the manual test cases is that if you're doing object set back test cases, you do not have the option to add query that you preview as test cases. That is only for manual test cases. So it's just something to keep in mind as you plan your solution. Let's go over a couple more things about the evaluation suite. So from the evaluations panel, if you hit view, I want to point out some things. So here again, we're seeing our test cases. So we actually have the option to save a run history data set, which is really useful. And so this allows us to record all the inputs, outputs, and metadata, as long as we have the execution set to project scoped. So to get your run history stored in a data set, you're going to create data set. Now I already have a file with that named in this folder. So I'm going to change this to data. Hit create. And now careful here because before you hit run evaluation suite, you're going to want to hit the cog and make sure this is set to project scoped execution. And that's what you need to do in order to see results in that data set. And now hit OK and then hit run. And then shortly you'll have records in that data set. Now, the other thing to point out is that if you hit run tests, you're going to see this option to go to the metrics dashboard. And so here we can see some aggregate metrics. And you can also look at some comparison reports from here. Now from here, you can hit edit logic definition to go back to your AIP logic function. So let's talk about what's next. So in the field, you probably wouldn't want to just return yes or no, like we're doing here. Now, again, the reason why we returned yes or no is to be able to set up a simple evaluation suite. But if you want to be able to return full answers with context and explanation, you might not be able to use a simple evaluation metric. You might have to actually build your own custom evaluator using another function. So now, next up, we're going to hit publish. And functions are bound to the ontology, so you're going to have to select an ontology. Now make sure that you're using project scoped execution. Now you might get this message that you have to import resources. If you do, just hit import all. And now you're good. And now you're going to hit publish again. And that's all for today.
Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.